In the 1990s, a funny movie came out. There's a little eight-year-old boy named Kevin McAllister. During Christmas time, all the family had gathered together in one home to go on a trip, a vacation. And there was tensions in the house. There was a lot of commotion in the house. And this little boy, Kevin, fell asleep in the attic because he was in trouble and being bratty and the family got up the next morning everybody packed up and left and little Kevin was left home alone now since that first movie home alone I think there's been like five of them but it was a funny movie had a lot of humor in it a lot of laughs as a result of watching it but in the real world being forgotten is no laughing matter if you've ever been forgotten by a group of people maybe your family or whatever the circumstance might be it's a painful experience and that's what I want us to discuss in this study but before we do Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the privilege of being able to study it. We thank you for the life lessons that we gain from it. We ask today, Lord, that you would encourage us in who you are and encourage us in the love that you have for us. We pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, unlike Kevin McAllister, who was an, an actor, Joseph, the man we're studying in the scripture, he experienced being forgotten multiple times for long periods of time. It all started in the beginning of our study of his life when he was the favored in all of the family of all the sons, one daughter, and his brothers hated him. They couldn't speak well to him. They were jealous. And some would maybe say even rightfully so, but it wasn't Joseph's fault. It was Jacob's fault, his father. And it all came to a head one day when Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers to see how they were. And when they met up together, they all believed it was their chance to rid themselves of Joseph. They cast him into a pit and they forgot him. They had different ideas of what they were going to do to him. They ultimately sold him into slavery, but he was out of sight, he was out of mind. They just forgot about him. Well, he's picked up in the slave market, purchased by Potiphar, and there he is in Potiphar's house, serving Potiphar faithfully, and well, we discussed the whole scenario, being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and thrown in prison. And so we see Joseph being forgotten by his family, portions of his family anyway. And then he's thrown in prison and forgotten by his former employer. He just puts Joseph in the rearview mirror, goes on with life. And there Joseph sits in prison. As we continue studying Joseph's life, we get to Genesis chapter 40, and while they're in prison, Pharaoh's butler and Pharaoh's baker, no doubt uh, Pharaoh was suspicious that one of them tried to betray him in some way, and so both of them are thrown in prison, and they were put in Joseph's care. And while they're in prison, one night the butler and the baker both have a dream. 
involving their field of service for Pharaoh. And Joseph interprets their dream. And he says in each one of the dreams, in three days, the fulfillment of the dream was going to take place. And, and the butler, well, the butler was going to be restored to his position there beside Pharaoh, but the baker was going to end up being hanged. And it took place three days later. It was Pharaoh's uh, decision to, I guess, through investigation. We're not told in the scripture how it came about, but just the way Joseph said it would, it took place. Well, when Joseph interpreted the dream for the butler, he said to him, hey, this is going to happen. You're going to be back before Pharaoh. And when you do, please remember me. Put in a good word for me. I'm not supposed to be here. Well, two years later, the story of Joseph's life picks up. Two years later, Joseph is forgotten by his fellow inmate. In his story, he's forgotten by his family, he's forgotten by his former employer, he's forgotten by his fellow inmate. And he sits there for two more years. Joseph understands what it is to be forgotten. But although his family forgot him, Although the former employer forgot him, and although his fellow inmate forgot him, God never forgot him. Now, there was one other person in his life that didn't forget him, and that was his father, Jacob, who loved him dearly. And if you've ever been or felt forgotten by your family, or maybe forgotten by your former employer, or maybe just a fellow, not maybe necessarily an inmate, but some other fellow individual that you served with, worked with, had interaction with, and for some reason they just went off, lived their life, and completely left you behind and forgot you. It's a painful experience. I have a few times in my life felt like I was forgotten by someone or a group of people who I thought should have kept me in mind. And it's easy in those times to feel like, well, there's no hope because I've just been forgotten. But God never forgot Joseph. As a matter of fact, two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. And no one could interpret that dream to Pharaoh, and as the butler stood there beside him, he says, I now remember, I now remember my fault. We, we left off in Genesis chapter 40. I'd like to just read that last verse. It's just a, a cold way to, to end a chapter, but this is the way it ends. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph? but forgot him, forgot him. But then, at this time where Pharaoh's troubled by his dream, he's mad at those around him because none of his servants could tell him what it meant, the butler remembered. The butler remembered, hey, there was a guy in prison, and he interpreted my dream and the baker's dream, and it came to pass just like he said. Pharaoh calls for Joseph. But all of this took place because God never, never forgot Joseph. In times of struggles, in times of hardship, in times of strife and contention with other people, in times where, where you part ways with other individuals, it's easy to, to feel forgotten. But Joseph's story reminds us something about God himself. Now, we know from the scripture that God is omniscient. He knows all things. He sees all things. Therefore, he can never 
forget you. He will never forget me. Up until this point, we've been studying men of the Bible and, and, and those lives that are wrapped up in theirs. And in Genesis chapter 8, we, we read that God remembered Noah. In Genesis 19, when, when God went down to Sodom to destroy it be, and to judge it because of its sin, Abraham had had this dialogue back and forth with the Lord because he was c concerned about Lot. We're told that God remembered Abraham. We, we, we read that God remembered Rachel during the whole time of studying Jacob when Rachel and Leah was in this competition with one another. When we get through the life of Joseph and we look to the next guy on the radar, probably Moses, we get to Exodus chapter 2 and we see that God remembered Israel. God is not going to forget us. He's not going to forget us. He'll never forget us. I'm reminded of, of Luke chapter 23, the thief on the cross. He, he cries out to Jesus. He says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. You're going to be with me in paradise. I just want to read a couple of passages of Scripture. Maybe you're at a time in your life where you feel forgotten. Or maybe some have forgotten you. I just want to encourage you. I want to remind you from God's word that he will never forget you. He'll never forget you. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 2710, a passage of scripture that has meant something to me for many, many years of my life. The psalmist says, though my mother and father or my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. God is never going to forget. In Psalm 139, verses 17 and 18, I'd like to read this to you. It says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. In this psalm, the psalmist says, You know my uprising, my downsitting, you know my thoughts afar off, you know, the words that I'm going to speak before I ever say them. Jesus tells us that the Father has, has the knowledge of the number of every hair that is upon our head, and that number changes constantly. Jesus said that the Father is aware of every sparrow that falls to the ground. You are not forgotten. I am not forgotten. We will never be forgotten. As a matter of fact, turn with me to Isaiah, Isaiah 49, verse 15. Isaiah says this, Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet... Will I not forget thee? The Lord says, I will never forget you. A mother, one of the greatest loves we know of on this planet, she might forget her child, but I will never forget you, the Lord says. In Hebrews chapter 6, I'd like to read this passage of Scripture. Because Joseph's been serving the Lord and, and seeking the Lord and continuing to follow the Lord through all of this stuff in his life. And it, it might seem sometimes nobody's noticing this is not paying off. Some Christians might even say, well, what good is it to do the right thing if, if this is going to be the way it ends up? And in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, we read this. For God is not unrighteous. To forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unrighteous to forget your work. 
He sees you. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows what others have done, what others have said. He knows that others may have written you off, but He will never forget you. As a matter of fact, also in Hebrews, we read where the Lord says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. In Psalm 17, verse 8, the psalmist says this. He says, Lord, keep me as the apple of your eye. The apple being the pupil, the very center of the eye. And I don't know if you've ever done this. It's interesting. There are times, depending on the way the light shines, that if you look real close in another person's face, you can see your reflection in their eye. And there's other scriptures where the Lord says, you are the apple of my eye. The Lord is watching you. He's watching me. He's watching us so close that if you could behold in his eyes, you would see your reflection. Your reflection. So I believe it speaks of the reflection. The Lord has his eyes upon you. But I also believe it speaks of protection. The eye is, is one of the most sensitive areas of the light of our, of our body. And we have eyelids that blink in, in split seconds to protect our eye from anything that might hurt it. So remember this when you feel forgotten, when you feel left behind, when you feel like, man, I, I, I don't know, I thought God was going to do it, but it doesn't look like He's going to. It seems like He's abandoned me, He's forgotten me. He hasn't. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never forget you. You are the apple of His eye, the very reflection of what He's looking at and His protection is there upon you. God is never going to leave you. He's never going to forget you. And I hope and pray today that you take courage and comfort from knowing that truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your watchful eye. We thank you you will never ever forget us. And you will never ever leave us. What comfort that brings to our hearts. What courage that gives us to move forward and to face whatever lies ahead. We bless you and we thank you for this truth. We thank you that this is the reality of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.